Hey guys, I was reading an article today written by a student and the student was complaining about n the nature of her education, saying that she was just being crammed full of a bunch of information, remembering facts, but not really understanding anything, not understanding the big picture. She felt that she was just coming away with a bunch of facts, a bunch of memorization, not a real understanding. And that kind of reminded me of a lot of the code courses that are out there. You see, there are two types of code courses that I see out there. You see the uh, project-based courses where they walk you through projects. And walking through projects is cool, but it shouldn't be the first level. Walking through projects has its uses, but the problem is that a lot of times the people that are walking you through projects are not really explaining or teaching you all the basic things, all the fundamental concepts and techniques behind the projects that support the projects. For me, and in my courses, we do teach, I do teach with projects, but that's only in integration with a good foundational teaching curriculum, if you will. And what does that mean? That means that I teach you not only the how, but I teach you the why, and I give you the context. And as I've been saying in other vlogs, and I've talked about this for many years, in fact, the key to becoming a great developer is understanding the fundamental principles and techniques because what you're going to find as you get into your development career is that with just about every project, you're going to have to learn something new. So with that in mind, it kind of makes sense that you really understand the basic principles and this will allow you to learn new technologies, new frameworks, new languages, much, much more easily. Besides the project-based courses, you also have, I don't know how I would call them, I guess I would call them the snippet-based courses, where they have you write one line of code or a little piece of code, but they don't really teach you how to use this code for real. It's just kind of all disjointed. And I've had many people tell me they've done this this site and that site and this this uh, course and that course and they don't they don't know what to do they know they they learn like kind of what a function is and kind of what an object is but they don't know how to actually use it to do anything and on the other hand you have people who've done the project so they run through a project-based course and they they're writing the code and at the end they sort of get something working but they don't know why half the code does what it what it's doing and why to use it and why would you want to use that style of coding here and you want to use this style of coding they don't even they have no idea so they would walk into uh, any type of project or for real and they would not be able to actually do anything why you have courses like that because most of the courses put out by people are either put out by coders who have zero teaching experience and uh, even worse coders with zero teaching experience who've only been coding for a few years a teacher has two major roles Number one, the teacher has to simplify the key concepts so that the student will have that solid foundation to launch their career. Uh, whether it be coding, uh, whether it be uh, software development in uh, Java or PHP or Python, whatever, or whether it be martial arts or uh, business, you have to be taught the true key fundamentals. And these fundamentals have to be simplified so that you really understand what, what's going on. And the other thing that a good teacher has to do is they have to identify the key concepts that are required to be able to create that foundation. With programming, there are many, many things that you can learn, like just within a particular language, like Python, for instance, or JavaScript, whatever language you pick, they're big. They're big and there's all kinds of libraries and all kinds of things you, that you can do. But just like when you're using Mac OS or Windows, you use only a very small sliver of Mac OS. You only use a very small sliver of Microsoft Windows, of any app, right? If you're using a spreadsheet Excel, you don't use hardly anything in there compared to all the tools and all the capabilities that a, a complex piece of software has. Same thing with programming languages. You have all kinds of things that you could do, but most of the time, 99% of the time when you're writing software, you're gonna be using maybe 10% of the language maybe 20%, depending. And once in a while, you're going to you know, 
use this module here, use this library here, etc. Again, that's where the fundamentals come in. Once, because you once you have a fundamental, a good understanding of the fundamentals of a programming language or a framework, then the rest comes easy. If you want to jump into this, jump into that. That's how my career was when I was a freelance software developer. I would walk into projects with, uh, well, once I had some experience, you know, four or five years experience, I would walk into a project and I would uh, have no preconceptions with regards to the language I would choose. I would be open to any, using any language or any framework, even though at the time, this is uh, the 1990s, early 2000s, I was big into Java. That was really my favorite programming language. And I even had my own Java framework that I had developed. That being said, there were several projects where Java was not a good fit. And sometimes I would have to learn a new language, a new programming language to get up to speed. But because, fortunately, I had really good training in the fundamentals, and that took me a long time to put it together, it was easy for me to learn new programming languages. I could literally learn a new programming language in a couple of days and be functional, or learn a new framework in a couple of days and be functional. And that's really what a good course should have. That's what a good teacher should be able to provide is A, simplify the key concepts and B, identify those key concepts that you need to know so that you can get up and running as quickly as possible. You don't want to go down these rabbit holes of nerd rabbit holes where you're going to learn some strange specialized library, some rarely used aspect of the language. There's no point in learning it now because, let me tell you, psh, there's going to be tons of opportunity for you to learn things as you are working as a professional developer, either for yourself or working for a company or developing your own apps. Again, the key to being a great programmer, great developer is to have a super solid understanding of the fundamentals. And any experienced developer will tell you that. And if somebody tells you that's not the case, you know that they are just junior or intermediate level developers. And uh, there you go. I hope this is useful. Bye-bye. I just wanted to finish off this. I forgot to mention. So I had mentioned in a vlog, I don't know, about a month ago or something, but I was getting into the whole minimalism thing. I've always been a minimalist. If you look at my furniture, I buy like designer furniture that have, you know, very modern, simple lines, simple styles like Eames and Archibald Bois, stuff like that. So my style is very minimalist by nature. And I think that uh, I got that from my martial arts because in martial arts, the key to martial arts is to uh, strip away all the excess movement. So a beginner will throw punches that are inefficient. But as you become more and more and more advanced, you're punching, you're kicking, you're grappling, everything becomes much more efficient, energy efficient. Uh, in terms of the body of mechanics and alignment, they become more efficient. Efficiency is what separates the beginner from the master or from the expert anyway. With that in mind, I've I am continuing my move towards minimalism and I'm, I'm basically just giving away, giving away tons of stuff. I just gave away another five bags of uh, clothes and, uh, and uh, duvets and uh, all kinds of stuff. Stuff that I was not using. I have a rule, which I never, I didn't implement as, as well as I should, but I have this rule, this uh, one year rule. If you're not wearing a piece of clothes uh, with, you know, within a year, you probably don't need it. And maybe you should just give it away to somebody who could use it. And that might be the same thing for gadgets and devices. Like I have video cameras that shoot 720p and they're fine. But since I got fancy cameras like this, there's no reason for me to keep these, uh, these, um, these handy cams, right? What do they call camcorders? There you go. So I'm going to be giving away these things as well. And I'm telling you, every time I give away something, it's like losing five pounds. It's, it feels great. And uh, so something to consider. It's, it's almost frees your mind. And what it also does, interestingly enough, it, uh, it prevents you or it reminds you maybe not to buy stuff unless you absolutely need to. I was thinking of uh, getting something, I forget what it was, some minor piece of furniture, but I was like, yeah, I'm probably just going to give it away in a year. So why am I buying this thing? So it's uh, kind of an interesting mental experiment 
uh, minimalism, if you have that opportunity to become a minimalist, or you're fortunate enough to have excess in your life, I highly recommend you take a look at it because let me tell you, you just feel pretty good afterwards. All right, that's it for sure. Bye-bye.